Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hello and welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. Next Wednesday, June 20th, is the summer solstice. Now, during this sacred and powerful year that we're experiencing, there's many markers that amplify the resonance of vibration on the planet. Now, if you watch the Global Coherence Initiative uh, spectrogram or the induction monitors, you can see the effects of the Venus transit already on the frequency of the planet. As we approach a big marker, the big three in this series of three markers, the annular eclipse back in May, the Venus transit earlier this month, and now the summer solstice, the frequencies have kind of startled a, a few scientists and rattled a few awakened nerves. Now, if you did the timeline jump back in, uh, back during the, the Venus transit, you're experiencing pretty much a, a completely different reality, even more so than before. Now, up here in Shasta, the energies took a big leap in the last couple of days. It's been a steady increase since May 20th, but the jump since Sunday feels like preparation for something special, a clearing and a stepping up of frequency. And this time I, I sense that it is going to affect the unawakened as well. Whether people are aware of it or not is, is none of our business. So let's just let that be. That's not an intent that the unawakened should be rattled at all. People have their experience, their own journey, I honor that, that's fine. My mission continues to be focused on the awake and the ascension bound. And next week appears to be a really beautiful, highly charged event. So after, and that's after we get through this kind of cosmic blast of, uh, of last call, it's very similar to the clearing that we went through earlier in the year, but it's only happening in like an hour or a couple of hours at a time now. And I'm not just talking about the sleepiness, that's a completely different thing, but the, um, the bubbling up of sudden frustrations or little challenges to, hey, I thought I was holding my frequency and now this situation is bringing me down or I'm stepping back a little. All those things start to present as little tests from the higher self of, oh yeah, you think you're ready? Okay, let's throw this at you, throw this at you. And, and you have to remember that as an incarnate form, you're here for a reason and you don't stop, you, you don't maintain a certain level and all of a sudden you're done. It's it, not like that at all. Okay, so the jump to the Ascension timeline during the Venus transit was, was deeply felt by many of us. And that return of the feminine aspects of the self gifted us with wisdom, self-love, harmony, a real emphasis of all of that stuff that kind of pushed all of the doubt out of the way. And I'm still so grateful for this transformation, especially because it just feels amazing. It feels divine and purely creative and just magnificent. It's really magnificent. It's a beautiful vibration. This unconditional love coming in is so clear and so freeing and beautiful and happy and you're just, it's, it's really fantastic. But it also has this quality of wisdom, this divine feminine wisdom. And again, that doesn't it has nothing to do with being a man or being a woman. This is about integrating both halves. This is divine masculine as well going to have to integrate the divine feminine energies coming in. So all of us, no matter what sex you have incarnated as right now, are going through this integration of balance, balance, balance. And once you get to that balance and you're okay with everything being in a complete state of self-love, you've raised your frequency enough that the your light quotient is high enough that the your cells begin to accept and your light body begins to accept more and more of these higher frequencies and these 
these markers you can stare at the calendar all you want and and say oh next Wednesday it is here yes there are some cosmic timing things going on but when it comes to the ascension process we are in full-blown ascension process at this point now we've also we've heard the intention of source expressed as a dream and I explained this in my uh, on my in my article this week explaining the universe as as a very Tao type state everything that we experience is the answer to sources question let me know more of myself and the dream unfolds as sound light geometries universes galaxies stars solar systems planets and beings of every possible expression exploring every possible imaginable endeavor and behavior and here we are on this small planet in the Milky Way in this dream experiencing this beautiful metaphor of a planetary awakening shifting to a higher dimension a group of beings rediscovering themselves after a lengthy experiment in spiritual amnesia and then all of it disperses and reunites as the universe dreams of itself the dreamer within the dream of source now, if you've done my expansion exercise to connect to source level uh, that we did on the webinar you might be able to tap into that dreamer aspect of this incredible journey just feeling into yourself as source dreaming yourself awake just enough to take control of the dreams path and then you breathe as source in this lucid amazing beautiful dream of creation it feels like source has changed the truth of the dream altogether when you start getting really deep into it but for now just swim on the the surface of this experience as dream because this unconditional love does have that dreamy type quality and it's very soft and subtle and 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 uh, why is this kind of divine wisdom now I'm experiencing my own loop within the dream because a few years ago I published a novel in, entitled The Creator State and this is a story that I had copyrighted somewhat egoically back in 2001 after three years of clairaudient daily messages from my star brethren and I did not know who they were at that point the story of the creator state follows a group of artists uh, which is and when I say artist or if I say a creative person I mean painters musicians writers actors performers filmmakers anybody who does anything creative actively who and this group begins to encounter vast realms of consciousness while creating and this is something that I started experiencing myself in the 90s and when I was on stage and that kind of sent me into this journey of exploring what else was out there because I felt like it was it was important that it was part of, of my path so in the in the book the the group calls it the creator state because it feels like being one with all that is the creator state of consciousness and this phenomenon spreads worldwide linking thousands of creative artists and then the the creator the founder of the group decides that she and whoever whoever is available and wants to do it could take on an experiment to shift the reality of the collective consciousness by using quantum physics tapping into zero point field by doing similar to what they did with transcendental meditation all tapping into creative endeavors with an intention to shift the consciousness of the planet at the same time and they end up doing this experiment uh, which unites thousands on the summer solstice and as you can guess um, if if you know me at all uh, the story turns out pretty good <laughs> so the experiment succeeds now 
Let me just note that I didn't know anything about the shift movement until way after the novel was published. I barely knew what to do when the messages of 99 were talking about towers falling and rebuilding human hearts. And I I had no idea what they were talking about and didn't know what to do with that information when they started to come true. And yet here we are at the week before solstice, summer solstice, when I'll be gathering with a live group on Mount Shasta. And thousands around the planet are gathering to intentionally raise the consciousness of humanity and bring this unconditional love onto the planet and through humanity, the collective consciousness. So my dream, sources, answers, are unfolding in such a beautiful way that this metaphor, this language of light metaphor, is really the language of life. This is this is us in the dream. And once you take control of the dream, as I did with my awakening and deciding to pursue this this very bizarre profession, if you can imagine from an old paradigm point of view, talking about the things that I do, uh, I I decided to take control of the dream, and I continue to do that. And it's not about control. Like I'm I'm trying to to make things happen, make things happen. It's not that kind of control. And a lot of people get hung up on the word control. So let's say tapping in or feeling into your flow within the dream. And just like when we dream, when we experience that high fourth dimensional consciousness when we're in dream state, uh, once you learn that it is a dream and you want to change something, you can do whatever you want. So that's a straight up example of what we are doing with our consciousness as we go through the shift. Now solstice week, June 19th through the 25th. <laughs> why why the whole week? Why a whole week of activation? Well, because Metatron says so. <laughs> uh, but seriously, James Tiberon has been uh, channeling Metatron for a, a long time and has given us so much information. And if you've ever tapped in to any of the events, any of the 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 11, any of that, um, you know that that can be a very powerful way to connect with the shift. And I am eternally grateful to Tybe for doing what he does and, and, giving us just so much information on on uh, on Metatron and and Metatron's point of view um it doesn't mean that you have to take you know Metatron as bible and i know that the guardians do not but um i i see it from a different perspective i'm not polarized about metatron and the um geometries and structures that he has created in order to keep the keep us all on the ascension timeline and to ensure that knowledge and wisdom and planetary structure wasn't completely destroyed because it almost was so let's not fault metatron for holding things together much like the metaphor that i used a a couple weeks ago it's it's like taking a snapshot of the painting so that you can return and and know what it looked like originally before you go and mess it up and decide to start all over again okay so here we are the week before solstice huge activation of the crystal of ohm happened on the 999 a couple of years ago and now the the grids that have been worked on for the last couple of years are now in alignment and ready to receive this this full activation it's like turning up the volume on the grid everything's in place okay ready uh, switches on and crystal of ohm is that pure unique unconditional creative vibration sound harmonic unconditional love whatever you want to call it of source pure source consciousness and that is something that will will set a lot of people on on edge because it feels like <laughs> if you if you've taken on enough light um, it feels pretty orgasmic <laughs> and, and I don't mean like a, um, 
a kind of weird dominating um, kind of there's many kind of orgasms I realize that but w- when it comes to orgasms I'm talking about the the blissy happy giggly kind where you're just like ah you know just like fun and loving and wonderful um, but that that heightened uh, state is something that not a lot of people can handle. I'm not talking about, you know, blasting uh, orgasmic light all around the planet. Not Nobody's going to experience it like that unless you've taken on enough light and then you start feeling all this love and beauty and it's just wonderful. It's very, it's not the blissed out kind of thing. It's, um, it's absolute source, oneness. I mean, this is the end of identity completely. For, for folks that made that timeline jump, you're done. You're done with identity. I mean, it even feels weird to have SandraWalter.com or, or whatever. It's uh, Which is why I'm trying to find collaborators. If anybody's out there listening, I'd love to like take the next step with you. Um, please connect with me. Um, but as we lose this identity, a lot of people lose a focus point. And focus is what these dimensional, these levels of, of dimensions are are all about is where you are placing your consciousness. We're bringing along the body vehicle, which is an incredible thing in itself. Hasn't been done before. You used to have to die in order to ascend. And now we're, we're going straight out of the body into another frequency. But it's about focus. You can't be in this state of joy and bliss and love and wisdom it's not like some flaky hippie floating around playing your tambourine all day i mean let's get over that that stereotype this is pure wisdom and pure presence and it's knowledge it's wisdom it's knowing it's trusting yourself completely not dependent on anything external to um point your journey in in one way or another or frighten you that's the big thing is is with fear levels have just been out of control on the planet it's not even a human energetic fear has nothing to do with the human genome it's just something that we took on and now that we're getting rid of it we can get rid of it as fast as we like we just need more people resonating at this higher frequency in order to raise the consciousness of the rest of the planet. So we want to make sure that we're learning how to focus our consciousness. And this is this is something that I, I got into in my article uh, this week. As we open to this new level of light, we've got, we have enough people resonating in that fifth dimensional frequency already as far as you can go in the physical we're waiting for the 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 gateway six months not even waiting just like okay you know fine with it fifth dimensional is fine with everything so metatron and and saint germain are reporting that this council of angelics et's masters are meeting next week to activate this crystal of Om beneath Mount Shasta. And the crystals of the crystalline grid and are all, these master crystals are Atlantean constructs, which were anchored deep in the planet just before that second moon exploded and in the Atlantic and took the rest of Atlantis off the map. So I'm sure you can see the tie between the Atlantic and Atlantis. And that's where it used to be. Now, during Solstice Week, this energetic wave of unconditional love is going to blast through the crystalline grid from Mount Shasta, and any awakened ones in the vicinity get to feel it firsthand, and others get to experience it just by tapping into the grid with their consciousness. Focus. Again, focus. Opening. Not begging for it, not asking someone outside of yourself to do it for you. You're going to do it. As with all of these things, it's always you, 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 you. And now that we've we've reached this point where we have whew, quite a few thousand people at this what they call resurrection level, where you've you've resurrected your template, you've activated 
everything that needs to be turned on in order to fully accept the the cosmic rays of evolution that are hitting us every day and especially as our frequency of the planet increases and increases and increases we are still in that beautiful fifth dimensional consciousness state where i'm sorry hold on there's little microphone glitches going on we are still in that uh fifth dimensional consciousness state where you're just unaffected by that stuff but we've got some walking between worlds going on which is a side effect of the timeline gap now with as with any of the activations now a level of light quotient is necessary to accept this stuff into your beingness otherwise you're still getting hit with it and it's bringing up emotions and disparity and sadness and scrambles and, and, and survival level stuff and maybe you're still um, fighting the shift, fighting the frequency shift by you know look, looking at YouTube videos all day or just doing like all this this 3D stuff that has been um, a kind of habitual for, for awa awakened people as well as, as uh, unawakened but uh, it's time to step away from the grasping, clutching thing because you can do that as long as you want. You can do that for three more years or you can say, okay, I've made my choice. This is why I had that webinar prior to the Venus transit because that jump is available. You are able to get completely out of that lower density and it just, you know, it's still there but we are now walking between these worlds and going back and forth between experiencing a higher dimensional consciousness and yet stuff is happening around us that we are just not affected by and used to be. So it's, it's a very bizarre um, place. And I, I know I talked about this last year when I was like, wow, that last chunk of 2012 is going to be really weird where we're experiencing one reality and the, the gap between our reality and the, the lower dimensional reality gets wider and wider where you can either look at it like, oh my God, they didn't even see me or you can just be done with it. I highly recommend the be done. Get on the Ascension timeline because <laughs> it's, it's freedom. This is your freedom. This is, I say it all the time. Freedom is the new safety. This is your freedom. This is where it, it doesn't matter what happens to the Illuminati. It doesn't matter what happens to those structures. Walk away. Create something else. Create the thing that comes after that because collectively there is so much fear and anxiety about what is going to happen when the mass arrests well they've already started the ma when the mass arrests are public or people start finding out the truth you can cling to that as long as you want but you are actually feeding that energetic and i know i say that a lot because you y'all need it <laughs> all right and and it is not just about i i not going to read stories about uh, secret agendas anymore. It's not just that. you got to apply it straight into your own life, Charlie. This is look within. What is going on? I was, I was surprised when it came to my webinar. My webinars are cheap. Okay, it was $12 for, for two hour, a two-hour webinar with all kinds of like follow-up and replays and everything. And you know, some people chose to, to, you know, send the replay to their friends and not make a donation or anything. And I was like, okay, like what's going on there where I'm like trying, how am I, I, I would get frustrated because I was like, am I not getting my point across about authenticity and about moving into oneness? Because it was when I write in the morning, I, I get information. And one of the pieces of information over the weekend was, uh, that that people were, people were doing that and, and sharing the the replay with their friends and and I was like oh that's great they really like it hey wait a minute <laughs> you know that's not cool because I mean I, I don't care about the money but ask ask me or send your friend to me or you know where's 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 the love where's the exchange in that and as we move into this authenticity and 
and for those of us who are there, um, it, you kind of just have to walk away. I'm like, oh, wow. Cause I get, I get a lot of emails from people who want to be kind of, um, kind of email vampires, <laughs> you know, they're like energetically just asking all these questions over and over again. And my limit is three. If somebody asks like three questions and they get more and more involved as they go on, I'm like, okay, um, I, I would love to answer all your questions, but you have to, you know, schedule a session with me. It will give you clarity on a million questions, whatever you want. And then I, I don't hear from them again, or they come back with polarity, like, well, I can't afford it or whatever. I'm like, okay, well then read my website. It's all there. Listen to the shows. You know, this is just, you're just being lazy, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but if, if people ask, I, I have no problem with someone saying, look, I don't have $12 or, you know, writing me directly and saying, could I please listen to the replay? I feel like it's really going to assist me. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But then you better tell your friends and you better, you know, spread, retweet something of mine on Twitter or, you know, put tell your friends on Facebook or whatever how what a great time you had but I get these people who are like hiding about their awakening and then they ask for something and there's no energy exchange at all I give 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 and there's then nothing comes back you know not even a, a compliment <laughs> or a wow that replay was awesome or whatever so I'm I'm done with the uh, the the one-way email exchange altogether these are these are things that I have to walk away from but as we get into this post corporate dominated energetic as we as we leave corporate structure we have to realize we're not dealing with faceless corporations that you can just abuse and it's fine and you know I I'm I'm gonna make my own judgment about that person's work I mean this everything is free except for one-on-one -on -one sessions with me and I just started webinars so there's plenty of free stuff out there but please realize that it is free for you it's not free for me you know and people are like well websites are free no they're not and <laughs> and blog talk radio is not free and my time is not free I am not independently wealthy so Please respect new paradigm services as we're moving into this because we need your support. We're going to kind of do it anyway, but it's going to be small, small, small until everybody goes, yes, how can I help? Not just what can I buy so that I'm not really attached to you, but how can I help? And this is, and I really, I, I saw that with the, uh, with the webinar replay thing. I was like, hmm, okay. So there's, there's something missing there. And I'm experiencing this more and more where now I don't have any judgment on the folks that sent it around. Fine. Okay. You're, you're still learning, but here, here's the lesson in that. Just realizing, Hey man, that's probably not cool. You know, I, I can abuse, um, craft foods if I want to, you know, but, but maybe not Sandra, you know, it's, it's, it, let's not discourage the folks who are doing this new paradigm thing by expecting everything to be free. We are not funded by anything other than the love and light within our hearts and, and these missions. And just because you, you have communication with Pleiadians and Arcturians does not mean uh, that it equates to wealth in any way, shape, or form. Um, it, it used to if you wanted to abuse it in the old paradigm, but new paradigm, we are just wide open, whatever. Well, let's, let's see what happens. Um, but the, the energy exchange thing, please honor that. If you are starting a new paradigm service and you're up and running with something, you gotta, you gotta start drawing the line. You know, I went through this as a, as a performer where you would, you know, do shows night after night, week after week and, and get very little pay. And it was just a given. Oh, well, if you want to be on stage, then you just give up money, you know, until because there's the possibility of later, you know, becoming a star or whatever, or it's exposure, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, we're done with that. We're done with that. This is people No new paradigm services are important. And you want to 
please, you know, put, put your money where your consciousness is and focus on trying to support those folks, whether it's organic food or new energy or whatever. Let's try not to be lazy and just we'll deal with it later or after the shift everything will be fixed we are the shift you are the shift go ahead and take that step right now and this this timeline gap that I've been experiencing since the transit is the 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 amount of information coming in what I call light intelligence some people call it downloads I don't really resonate with that term I feel it's too trendy it's just bombarding my consciousness with information and some of it I don't even understand uh, and and that's fine but I'm experiencing that and at the same time we've got all these people coming into Shasta for the solstice with their expectations and their own agendas and let me be um, very straightforward the crystal of Ohm is is already on online man it came online a couple years ago but the the amplification that's occurring next week you can start to feel it already that is the swelling energy that I felt when I first came to Shasta and I was paranoid because I'm like wow it's a dormant volcano what's going on I just felt like this arisement and it uh, as it turns out um, that was actually the, the crystal uh, because now the energy has has broken the surface and is just flowing 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 and it's it's beautiful it's really beautiful but l let me be just really frank nobody has to like anchor any ascension codes into Mount Shasta okay <laughs> there's no nobody has to like go up and we are going to blah you know um, if you are guided with clarity to do a specific action on Shasta, so be it. But nobody's activating the crystal of Ohm outside of this collective awakened consciousness that's at that higher frequency. Okay, nobody's coming in and it's not going to happen un unless we show up. You are experiencing the unconditional love. You are raising your vibration to the point where you can accept that into your life. That's what all the clearing is about. That's what the expansion is about. That's what pure intention is about this month. That's where we are at, okay? So when it comes to Solstice Week, just focus your consciousness on being open in that crystalline state of expansion. There's no, we don't have to intend to do anything outside of radiate what is being given to us right now. And that doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. Please don't engage in like super 3D behavior next week if you want to assist. Because the assistance right now is about taking it in, taking it in and integrating and really getting yourself to hold that higher vibration. Yes, there are a lot of codes and harmonics and all kinds of experiences, experiences coming in, but nobody has to go up and, and uh, activate Mount Shasta. Okay, we're just experiencing it. We're just plugging in to the crystalline grid. And for those of us who are already plugged in, you could feel it this week already. It's like, ooh, okay. And it's just getting better and better, and it's amazing. I was in a, an actual pyramid this morning. There's a, a pyramid built here in Mount Shasta. And uh, Omaran, who is the, the owner and builder, um, uh, let me meditate in the pyramid this morning. And it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And there was, there's no, it's the removal of all the expectation and the I, I have to and I'm trying, all that is completely gone. Just going and playing with the energy that is available. That is flow. This isn't a panicky grab for my ascension codes or activate me, whatever. It's, it's a real unity. And this unity consciousness, this crystalline consciousness is it already exists, it's already here, it's been here since the 1111. It's just a matter of turning it on and then receiving everything that comes with it. 
because once you turn it on you're just constantly in a state of acceleration yes you're gonna it's like a balloon you get stretched out one day that's as far as I can go and then the next day oh, complete collapse and then a little stretched out a little further the next day and back we are learning how to exercise and focus this crystalline consciousness and make it bigger 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 as you expand yourself you're able to receive more and more and this the stuff that I'm receiving the energy that I'm receiving right now as as we speak is incredible and I'm my I'm I'm just flying I'm absolutely flying and it seems it's very it's kind of surreal because part of my consciousness has gone uh, is already completely like focused on that fifth dimensional frequency and I get it I, I finally just you know I'm, I'm set during the Venus transit jump the timeline I'm there I'm locked in <laughs> I've got you know magnet boots on the on the steel timeline <laughs> of, of ascension I'm locked in I got it and I uh, and it it gets bizarre to experience this gap in, in the timelines I've got pre-activation energies like shaking things up in the collective consciousness and I can feel it but I haven't been exposed to anything mainstream in weeks I don't know what's going on um, you know little little things will will occur and it's this this balance my my tent zipper broke and my friend is coming here to camp and so I had to get that fixed and at the same time my star family is showing up and Yeshua presented to me in in a way that felt like the way he visited me as a kid people keep asking me about awakening on the street and they don't even know I'm an ascension counselor everywhere I go people are just starting up this this conversation and then I receive light and tell about my ascension and the dimensional split and then my my telepathy is starting to amplify and yet I'm crazy sleepy because this fifth dimensional part of me is working on overdrive trying to get all the structures in place so it's a it's a very interesting place to be okay so as this as, as we start kind of walking between worlds and making very good nice choices of discernment about what we're gonna pay attention to and what we're not I highly recommend next week paying attention focus your consciousness on exactly what you want this is very creative we get to create whatever we want pure creation is back and it's you you creating whatever kind of experience you want to have have fun with it don't feel like you have to do a certain modality or a certain service or whatever feel your guidance you've got I've had a lot of of incarnational experiences just pop up out of nowhere and all of a sudden I'm doing something that I'm remembering from lifetimes ago it's it's that free-flowing as we kind of reunite all these journeys and we're coming to this close of these cycles it's amazing so I'm doing a I'm gonna be gone next week uh, for for solstice and I'm very excited because I get to be with a whole group of light workers camping out under the stars on Mount Shasta and I'm very honored to lead the gathering of 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 that group uh, with an opening of our multi-dimensional Stargate so as as wild as that sounds um, it's it's a resonation so like everybody in the group is like oh yeah and you, you nod and you're like yeah I know and not only that but it's not it's not about um, any kind of obsessive agenda or or doing it the right way doing it the wrong way nothing like that this is all just just us getting together and saying yes 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 we're gonna do it I mean this is this is us we're, we're opening ourselves now since the since the Venus transit webinar was so successful I am having one June 24th so get yourself on the newsletter list if you want an invite and that's gonna be like a six month countdown okay here we are we're going to do body vehicle preparation and timeline focus exactly what I'm talking about here um, in a nice clear way so that everybody gets it and everybody can integrate this again integration integration and because I have folks coming in I'm cutting the show a little short sorry 
Uh, but I love you and have a beautiful solstice and a beautiful and creative two weeks. I'm off next week, but I will see you in two weeks. I love you. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com. Thank you.